program. Hello and good morning to you. I'm Rasita. I'd be talking to you about uh, enterprise agile transformation and the importance of culture and mindset. Okay. So I would go through like what this agile buzz was all about sometime some years ago and the problems with agile adoption and the areas to consider in agile transformation. So most of you would have heard that uh, about 10 years back, 8, 10 years back, it was a buzz. Like everybody wanted to do agile. Like agile, scrum, like XP, um, there were so many words coming up and people were so interested getting to know that and trying to follow that. And some comp what happened was some companies didn't know really what agile was, so they were trying out trying out things and making mistakes and learning new things. So maybe this uh, cartoon would be something that you can read through. Like, so I, I, I can relate to this because my first Agile project, I was a tester. I was brought in as a tester for this Agile project at a later phase, not when it was started. So like a bit of a bad Agile practices. And, uh, and I was told, okay, Rosita, get this product tested. I said, oh, okay. And I, when I went there, Okay, where are the requirements for me to test? No, we are doing agile. Okay, fine. So how am I to test? Uh, there is no documentation. Okay, fine, because the company was from waterfall to moving into agile. So there is no documentation, fine. But is there any other way that I could get the requirements? So how I really end up writing the test cases or doing testing was I was going to each and every developer, asking for requirements, what they have implemented, collected all the information, and wrote test cases, and tested the product. So that is how my first Agile experience was. So I'm not saying there is something wrong or anything, but that is how most of the companies started. Some companies started because the customer wanted it. Some companies started because that is the trend in the market. But some companies, they really looked into the need, why they want it, and what is the advantage that the company is going to get. Because like Agile is not a silver bullet. You can't use it in all the projects unless you know how to use it or whether sometimes waterfall is better than Agile. But Agile is good if you use it right. So here, uh, this is also another thing. So people are so interested in this Agile trend and they get a team. People start doing scrums. Yeah, every day we do scrum. We do retrospectives. We have a burn down chart, so we are doing Scrum, or we are doing Agile. Do you think it really means Agile? Agile is, maybe like the, the, uh, that team is trying to do Agile, but just because we do the retrospectives or the ceremonies the, that we have because we have roles or just because we have the uh, documents that, not documents, the burn down charts and the, yeah, you call it documents. Uh, the burn down charts and the velocity, it doesn't mean that we are doing Agile. So Agile is beyond that. Agile is how you create the culture of the organization and how you create the mind, set the minds of the people to work for an Agile organization. So different teams might do uh, Agile in different way. They, they might use Scrum. All the teams might use Scrum, do Scrum, but in different ways. So it all depends on the people, process, and tools. So sometimes what we think is, OK, we have the right tools. We get, OK, we are using Jira, we are using Confluence, and we, have, uh, we, we use planning poker and all. So we are using Agile. No, not at all, because tools alone is not going to give you uh, the advantage of getting the best of Agile. So I will go through some of the important, like this is some of my experience, like what I have uh, realized throughout my uh, Agile career. So one thing that I have realized is the leadership that we get in terms of converting or transforming the company to Agile is very important. So just because the management or the top people want the company to be agile, we can't create an agile enterprise because it's not that easy. 
because uh, there is a lot of communication that is needed. There is a lot of uh, uh, relationship that we have to build for people to understand what Agile is really about. Because Agile is not something that you can learn in a month or two. You have to try it out. You have to try it out. Because and Agile, what I implement or what we implement in one project or what we implement in an, one company would not be the same where what we implement in another company. So there will be a lot of difference when it comes to uh, implementation. So uh, what I have seen is like when we have a management culture, it's quite difficult or it's quite difficult to approach uh, to uh, difficult to get the transformation smooth. But when we have a leadership culture, and especially when we get leaders of different levels, especially um, at the middle management or at the lower level, we have to have leaders who can uh, share the vision and who can uh, share uh, the, the knowledge of uh, Agile and uh, make people understand what it is all about. Just uh, having the vision is not enough to uh, get uh, the best out of Agile. So I would um, first go through one of these areas that I showed you, the people. So one important thing that I see is discipline. So if you are not disciplined, or if you are not disciplined, it's, it's uh, very hard to follow Agile, because Agile is all about discipline. For example, say we have Scrum. We have Scrum meeting at 3 o'clock, and we have six people in the project, and we have product owner, and we have Scrum meeting at 3 o'clock, but half of the people come at 3.15. What happens to the rest of the people? They're wasting time. Where are they going to, like, how do they burn that time? What do they say? How do they burn it? Because there is a lot of productive things that they have to do. So it's really important that we are disciplined, not only in terms of time, but also in what we do. For example, if we are doing a task, we have to be able to make the other team members understand what we are doing. Yeah, what we are doing. And uh, OK, so it's really important that we have good discipline. And then it's important that we have continuous training. For example, like we might have about 60 people, 70 people, or 100 odd people in the company. So it's really important, like each and every person who comes into the company has a good agile knowledge. Just because we put them into the team doesn't mean that they are going to get agile knowledge. So each and every person has to go get that knowledge. And it has to be continuous. Just because that we give them a basic agile training for two, three hours doesn't mean that they are going to absorb what it is all about. So it's really important that we give continuous training. And it needs continuous mentoring, where people would uh, learn from other projects, more collaboration. Continuous mentoring uh, is something that is important. And also, the empowerment. People should be empowered to make decisions. Because Agile is all about an um, empowered team. So people, like when they have, uh, now when we have a team which has the knowledge to make decisions on their own, can do a better job than somebody else making the decision. Like, those days in waterfalls, the project manager would do the decision for us. But here, like it's the team. It's always the team. Like if there is an estimate, OK, I have this experience. Like sometimes uh, we give estimates. The team gives estimates. And then uh, from the customer side, the customer says, no, 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 no. We want uh, less amount of time. But if, say, like if we have a top management and says, OK, the customer says you have to give it by this day, no, you shouldn't do that. The team has the responsibility and the team has the decision-making skills. So if they say, OK, this is the estimate that we want, they should be able to negotiate. I'm not saying, like, OK, we are sticking to this. This is what we should do. But it has to be flexible. But the team has to make the decision, not somebody else. The team, has, um, the team should be empowered to make that decision. And it's really important that the company has a flat structure where people can go and talk to anybody and uh, share their knowledge and talk about the things in the project. 
So for example, like if you have a small problem in the project, yeah, you should be able to talk to your top management or people around and find a solution. Maybe your team might not have the solution, but the team somewhere else or another team who sits next to you or somewhere else might have the solution. They might have the technical solutions, but the top management would have a business solution. So you should be able to go and talk to them. So that um, relationship is required in Agile. So something that I always feel is uh, it's really important, a simple smile, a simple good morning. It goes a long way. That is something that I have seen. Because we don't see the importance of it, but it goes a long way. Just a good morning, the, other, the person would come and talk to you the next day. So that helps you a lot. And yes, and uh, this is something that I have tried out. Um, I was working for a waterfall, a company that was following waterfall. Then we had to uh, change all the projects, follow, get into Agile. So we were struggling like nothing because all waterfall, CMMI, ISO standards, all standards were there. And we had to move into waterfall, sorry, Agile. So it was so tough. And people only knew about Agile, like people think, okay, no documentation. People thought no documentation. Agile never says no documentation. It says the required amount of documentation. So there were, uh, there were issues because every company learns. Not everybody is perfect. Everybody learns and then uh, they uh, uh, get to the best level. So how we started was, it was very difficult for us to go from waterfall to uh, Agile. So what we did was, it was very hard to follow Agile in, in like very matured way. So the first thing we did was, okay, we brought in something called a light process. A very light process where it says, okay, you have to have the requirements. It doesn't define, like the whole company, like whatever the projects that they do have to have the requirements. But how you document it is, uh, a document depends on you. You can either record it, record what the customer asks for you, or you can use Jira, or if you want uh, word templates, go for word templates. But do, write the requirement where you can refer to it again. Because it depends, like uh, Joe was talking about uh, requirements. We have to be in the same location and have, um, we, uh, that is how the agile was uh, look, looked into. But uh, in our context, especially in Sri Lankan context, we don't work in the same room. The customer would be somewhere, the UI person would be somewhere. So it's very difficult. Sometimes you won't have the same people working till the end of the project. So it's very difficult. So you start with a six-man team, and then uh, in about a year or two, like you have to grow the team a bit. So you have to have the you have to have certain documents as a, a reference. Like it, it it requires. Like I'm not saying like uh, as in those days we write a lot of documents. You write a lot of use cases, write a lot of descriptions. No, but simple flowchart that anybody can understand, or a simple user story that anyone can understand. So that, uh, that is how we started, light process. And then people moved on to strict agile, where like when it comes to enterprise agile, there is a lot more, which I would come to. And uh, when we started this light process, people came up with their suggestions. They were telling me, OK, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? Like they were, the people in the company were coming up with ideas. And with the ideas of those ideas of the people in the company, we implemented a, a process. Because it's, sometimes we think, OK, we don't need a process. We, we do agile, so we don't need a written document. But uh, it's OK for 10, 15 man company. But for a company with 100, 200 people, it's, it's impossible. Like, I don't know, like for me, like I thought it's impossible. So we came up with a process, but the process was built by the employees, not one person. It was built by the employees, like they brought in ideas. And this simple light process was growing bit by bit. And that is how the agile process was documented. There was an agile process documented, <coughs> not the same scrum process that is, not the scrum guide, we go through the Scrum Guide, we go through XP, we go through Kanban. And with all those information, what is it, what is it that we want for our company? That is how the process was implemented. 
And then just having the process doesn't help. Because when we have the process, we'll say, OK, do it. People are a bit, uh, what do you call? People are a bit lazy if you don't go and like look into it, what they are doing. So it's really important that you review, at least till they get into the trap. And after that, like for, for me, for example, I would say, for about two, three years, I was reviewing and giving improvements, and like they also bring in improvements. After that, it's like it's in their body. It, they, they do it automatically. They will never do a project without requirements. They will never do a project without risk analysis. It's normal for them. So they get used to it. But initially, it's important that we go behind them, tell them why we need it. It's important that you do it. So, so that kind of reviews. Initially, they will not like it, but you have to do it. And, and then, and uh, this is also there. Sometimes we think, OK, the review processes that we write should only be for the engineering part or the project management part. No. I think everything starts from the beginning, at the time when you get the customer. If it is a product company, it's different. But uh, for, there are project companies as well. So like, here, like we have project companies and product companies, different companies. So when it comes to project companies, uh, when it comes to project companies, uh, we, uh, we have to make sure that we have it from the beginning, like f from the time that we get a uh, lead or the project request. And always have a project retrospective and a post-mortem, like either, uh, either a retrospective or a post-mortem, because not only about uh, the good things that happen, but always see like what has happened, like how much code that you have written, how, what are the requirements that has been collected, how much time that you have spent on it, how much people have put on effort, and um, what are the learnings, where did, you all, where did we go wrong, and what are the uh, learnings for the next project. These are the things. Like, so from those, we bring improvements to the current process of the company. So that is how a process or the agile enterprise uh, improves. And, uh, and uh, the other thing is, sometimes we forget to measure. So if I ask, OK, are you better than last year? How would you measure it? Like sometimes some people might think, OK, I'm doing better than last year because I'm earning much better than last year. Some people might say, OK, yeah, I have uh, gone down a bit, go gone down from last year. For me, of course, the other way around. If I put on a bit, then I'll say, OK, I've got uh, better. So like that, you have to have a measure. So if you don't have any measures, you will not know where you are. You'll think, oh, OK, we are doing better. But based on what are you saying that you are doing better? Based on what? So it's really important that you measure. If you do not measure, it, I'm, it's pretty sure that we are not going to improve at all. We'll be in the same position thinking, oh, OK, we are doing all well. So measure, measuring is very important. But it's difficult to get the right measures at the beginning. So get simple things. Uh, like, OK, how much code coverage have we done? How much technical depth do we have in the project? And uh, how much uh, bugs, of course, I won't say it's a very good measure, but uh, like simple things, OK, how, uh, what is the velocity? Uh, what is the, like, uh, maybe uh, the task closing rate? Like, we open tasks, but close quite late. So simple measures would give you an idea how the project or the company is moving on. And very important to have risk analysis. We sometimes we forget to manage our risk. Sometimes we know our risk. We talk about it. We uh, escalate it. We do everything. But at the end of the day, that would be that would happen uh, because like we haven't done anything to mitigate it. We know the risk, but we just keep it. We keep telling others, but we keep it. So just like that picture, we just analyze, but there is no management. So it's really important that we manage it. And uh, this is a, a, a graph that I got from one of the sites. And what they say is like how the agile maturity curve, like here it shows like what happens initially when you do agile. I'm not sure whether it's very clear. Like uh, there is not a lot of communication. Initially, you have less communication with the customer. But the, the rapport that we have, the, uh, what do you call, the, the amount of trust that we build, like it's very important that we build the trust with the customer. 
So with that, you grow up in Agile. So uh, it shows like from where the simple uh, Agile methods, you just follow the Scrum uh, methodologies. And then how you go into risk analysis, how you do your, um, what do you call, measurements, and how you have a enterprise level process documented. So it, it shows like how you get into, uh, get to a level where you get the best out of Agile. Uh, just, uh, I'm like, I, I, with the experience that I have, it's not that very easy to adopt Agile. It takes time. You can't do it in three months or six months. Uh, my experience is like for me to change about 20 odd projects, like that was in the company at that time. When I started from Waterfall to um, Agile, it took me about two years. It took me two years to train people because there were about 150 people. So training 150 people, and it's really important that you retain them. It's very important to retain, not, like, not train them and send them off. Like You have to have a culture where people would retain. So retaining people and uh, training them and mentoring them and giving them the uh, happiness of working for a company like that. And uh, to turn everything to agile and to get it to about uh, level four, it took me about two years. But, uh, but it was really good. It was very hard, but very good. And uh, just to sum it up, uh, you will ne never have the perfect process in the world for your company. So it's all what you do. Because just because I tell or from where I read uh, from the books or we read from websites, doesn't mean we can follow that process. You cannot. Unless you find the right process for yourself. Because it has to come from the employees itself. But to lead, you have the right person. Find the right person to lead the uh, agile transformation and get everybody involved, get people involved. But I'm not saying when I say everybody involved, not 100% is going to get involved. 20% would definitely keep on rejecting whatever you say. Everything that you say, they will reject. But there will be another 20% who would come and help you. There's another 60% who would do anything, but would uh, do whatever you say. So take that 20% that helps you and build up the process for your company with the culture and the right mindset. Because make use of the 20% people who would help you. Because you have to share the uh, knowledge and whatever the mindset that is required through that 20%. Because you can't do it alone. So it's always with people that you have to do the transformation. Just one person alone cannot do it. So with that, I conclude my uh, talk. If there's any questions, you can ask me. I'll be more than happy to answer. Because more than presenting, I would uh, be happy like answering questions. There was on one slide yeah. a, uh, a, a, a phrase like, uh, not only for development and project management, but also for customer and for demand management, something like that. Yes. Yeah, it's because like um, now what I have seen is we do processes for engineering. For engineering, we do process, okay, requirements is, has to be done like this and all. But we forget the customer acquisition part. But it's really important for a business as a whole to know what's happening at customer acquisition. Because sometimes the leads would come. Like uh, you will get uh, some projects where you have leads, but you don't know what's happening because you're not keeping track of it. And uh, you don't follow it. You don't know what happened. But uh, what I have seen is, what I have experienced is, like you see why we lost the lead, what is the reason for us to succeed in this lead. And uh, uh, if, if we uh, want, like sometimes what happens is we get projects and we want more developers, which the company cannot cater. But still, we go and uh, get people. But is it um, feasible? So those things will be captured if you have a process for that, because we'll be improving that process. In other words, connecting engineering to the business. Engineering right? to the business, yes. Yeah. The overall operations. Because not, engineering should not be isolated. Like The overall operations would come with that. Thank you. Uh, how can you sort of uh, give a return to the client from uh, 
ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் <laughs> when we start a sprint we have a set mind saying this is what we are going to do but you are coming and trying to disturb something but for that you have to have a good relationship because whatever it is customer is the king customer is the king like he's the one who's going to pay us but you have to have a, because i have said no to my customer so many times so uh, what happens is um, uh, if you tell them for that you have to have a great relationship and you you should be able to convince them saying okay you will not get the best out of this if if you wait for another sprint we can get this so you want to do it in two weeks we will finish this sprint and then come to that requirement that you have so if you can't if if he keeps on saying okay you can't you terminate the sprint okay you won't get anything that we have done like say uh, you start at the sprint uh, a week back so you are in the middle of the sprint he still wants to do it in two weeks so i'm going to terminate the sprint you won't get anything that we have done so so from the beginning you do the planning planning and from there onwards for two weeks work you are doing so the moment you terminate the customer won't come again saying okay give me the requirement so you you should be able to put your foot down and say i'm going to terminate because it's tough it's very tough i'm i'm telling it very easily but i have done to certain ceos like one of the ceo like this is my experience and uh, we were supposed to give a demo say day after tomorrow we have to give a demo and today he is coming and saying no there are too many clicks here i don't want this i want it like this i said i'm sorry we can't do it now because if 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 you are going to do it now you won't even get whatever we are planning to give you day after tomorrow so if you want to do a demo uh, we can't give it because then you will got in you will get nothing either i terminate or i give you whatever we planned but uh, it's not easy for him but uh, uh, he still uh, agreed said okay give whatever you have planned but you have to have the good rapport relationship without relationship you can't do it <laughs> then you say okay i'll find another <laughs> supplier <laughs> yes Agile has a lot of flexibility. Yeah, we are going to sprint and someone might do any some task to the sprint and so what what is the best approach when something important that we need to be done in the sprint and now it may affect your agile that is uh, to may go up mm-hmm. and some task may fall off the next sprint so what is the approach to that Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it okay if I take that? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay. Uh, the thing is, when we, no, Agile, like that's what I told, Agile is all about mindset. When we start a sprint, we are starting that sprint with the mentality saying, okay, we are going to finish it. The moment you bring in new things in, you won't have the same pace that you started with. You will definitely get disturbed. you will have get disturbed and you will not have the pace and uh, you will not do whatever you can really achieve so what i always recommend is like if you are to get new requirements in terminate the sprint 
and then start another sprint. Because like, it's not, we are not doing anything for one month. It's a two-week sprint. So the product owner also has some responsibility. Like, OK, two weeks, this is the two-week sprint. So they have to do their homework and say, OK, these two weeks, this is what we are going to do. Once in a while, I'm not saying no. Uh, we won't get anything. Like, if, if it is a small change, yeah, agreed. Like, this button, instead of putting it here, you put it here. Yeah, that's fine. But not a major architectural change or major new function. No, not like that. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can uh, talk to me outside. Thank you.